every direction. So every one of these cells is exactly the same size. Yep. Ah, okay. Every single one is the same size. Yep. They're just twisted around slightly differently for each one. It's another geometric pattern then, isn't it? There is a reason for this though. And I'll tell you in a moment. Okay. So I want to finish this up. I'm just about finished with this one. This I wanted to emulate the same dimensions of the last uh, generator that was outside. Mm. I think it was generating over a million. Mm. This one's almost finished. Let's see. Really? It's almost finished. Mm-hmm. Huh. Um th this particular generator design is to assist people when they want to design ships that have as much energy with the least amount of mass. Ah, so this is a space saving generator. Or a mass saving generator. And again, like my last design with the whatever the fruit whatever you want to call them, the berry cells. <laughs> yeah, berry cells. Fruit cells. I thought that was yeah, the fruit cells. Um, it's also a, it's also a scalable design. Right. Of course, because you can make it any size you want. Yeah, that's why I wanted to make kind of an air arbitrary size here, and then you can just stretch out wherever you want. Um, though it probably would work best with um, rectangles. Oops. Right. Uh, but I was just doing some study on um, on larger cell groups and found that you can pretty much make the same dimension with any shape cell group and get the same energy out of it and then it kind of dawned on me that hey maybe I should try to um, design um, see what happens when I stick a whole bunch of these cell groups in the same box and what kind of pattern can I make and how many of these can I fit in the same space hmm. and and then I 25 by 25 by 33 sh uh, shell I've come up with this it right now generates 639,000 energy per second mm -hmm. and the number of blocks involved is oh I didn't take the math I'm gonna have to probably multiply because uh, the number of blocks in each cell group are, is identical mm. um, so let me just take the very first group that I generated. So I'd be just delete everything that forty nine. I'm sorry. Just delete everything that isn't power. Well, it's twenty five plus twenty four plus thirty two. It's eighty one blocks, and then let's see how many cell groups we've got. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, twenty four. It'd be 1,944 blocks, I believe. And if you divide the energy out of that blocks, you'll get the amount of uh, energy per, per block distribution mm. for volume. Which, if I do that, um, which is 639,558.9 divided by 1944, you're going to get 328 energy per block. Whoa. Whoa, that's considerably bigger than what it was before. And it gets better the larger designs you make. Whoa. So no, I need to rebuild the tail on the trigger. <laughs> the whole trick is to make the cell groups as large as possible. If I made any more cell groups in here, yeah, I'd get more energy, but that, that uh, energy per block density would drop considerably, even for the next cell. Even for this next cell group that I make. On the so trigger, it's already at the best. I'm sorry. So, so you reckon that it's already good like this, or you got more? Yes. Trigger. You wouldn't really need any more. What you would do at this point is you would add subsystems, other subsystems. It's going to add mass to the ship, but you wanted to keep the mass as low as possible for your energy generation, so you could add stuff like cloaking, radar jamming, and stuff, and then still be able to power the ship. Because hmm. that's what you want. You want as much block. Uh, you want as much energy per block possible because when you start using stuff like radar jamming and cloaking, they're going to suck up all the power based on the mass of the ship. Right. And, and so, so this yeah, this minimizes ship, yeah. mass but maximizes your energy output. Right. 